I'm Janya. In this video, I've been asked to make a sculpture. And for that sculpture, I've been given a chunk of wood and a jet engine blade. This is going to be fun. Let's have a closer look at it. This blade is from a Blackburn Buccaneer Navy fighter jet, which means it's from a Rolls-Royce Spey engine. Now, I don't know a lot of the details, but I've been told that this is a second stage turbine blade from that engine, which means that it's either a titanium alloy or more likely a nickel alloy. That makes it really tough, but super lightweight, which is exactly what you want in a jet engine. However, somewhere between it being in an engine and being right here, it's suffered some serious abuse. You can see a lot of nicks on this leading edge. And on this side, this structure has had a pretty large hit that's raised a very sharp vert here. So I'm going to grind that off, tidy it up, make sure it's not too sharp, uh, and also possibly wire wheel it to get rid of some of these marks. But obviously I'll try it somewhere like down here where it's not going to be visible, just in case it completely ruins the patina of it. The other thing is I'm going to get rid of this and then I'm going to CNC into the wood some steps for these uh, mounting parts to sit into. And then I'll epoxy it all in. Those sparks were so bright I had to wear tinted goggles, so definitely a titanium alloy. I tried wire reading it, but it changed the patina more than I like, so I just left it as it is. It's time to work on the base. Now this is a piece of wood that I was given for that, and I think it's a sample piece of kitchen worktop. And very helpfully on the back, it tells me that it's a roco. I have it in my head though that a roco is usually lighter than this in colour, so I think there's quite a lot of finish on it. So what I'm planning on doing is removing all of that finish and then seeing what I've got to work with. But my plan is to put a generous chamfer around all of the top sides and then mount the blade in it in disorientation. The base is now ready for finishing. I'm going to put a few layers of Danish oil on it, but before I do that, I'm going to etch my logo onto the bottom with the frickin' laser beam! And then I'll be ready to CNC the pocket and get it all mounted up. Because the piece already had finish applied, I used some thin plywood to spread the clamping load and not mark the surface. I was just seconds away from actually starting the cut when I suddenly realised these clamps were not going to be cleared by the gantry. I'm so glad I saw it because they used to be this thick and they were definitely going to hit. So I've replaced them with some steel ones because that's the only material I have that's thin enough and strong enough to clear it. Now that's done, it should be fine. I did actually use two cutting bits for that. So I used a down cut bit 
for this top section and then all the rest of it was done with an upcut bit. The reason being that I wanted that top surface to be really nice and clean and a downcut bit because it cuts in a sort of downward motion leaves this really nice crisp edge whereas the upcut bit leaves this fluffiness. However the upcut bit is much better at clearing away chips so it's much better for the router. Then I tidied up the corners, added some cork feet and carefully epoxied the blade in. That little bit of glue squeeze out shows that there is plenty of glue in the joint, and that could be cleaned up with acetone before it cured. And it's done! So I am super pleased with how this came out, I think it looks really good. And I'm actually pretty jealous that I don't get to keep this. But I'm definitely going to be looking to see if I can make some more, keep one for myself and then maybe put some up for sale on Etsy or my website. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this build. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.